Hi, I'm Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Red Bearded Beater Go Out and Sketch instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch a red bearded bee eater by applying what you learned in your step by step lesson. You can follow along with this video sketching lesson even if you don't have the kit. You can help this small business by clicking the like button, subscribing to this channel, and shopping for future lesson crates at naturesketchcrate.com. You can go out and sketch a bee eater or a similar bird at a zoo, garden, park, your backyard, or even HD video at home. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. Today, I'm sketching from a composite video of a red bearded bee eater for demonstrative purposes. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, relax, observe nature, and don't get too caught up with accuracy. Let's get started. So apply what you learned in your step-by-step -step lesson. Use the information you know about already drawing a bird and your hello, I'm a red beard bee eater information to draw this drawing. And also use the paint formulas and the step-by-step -step instructions to paint the bird as well, make it faster and easier. So first, figure out where you want the bird situated on your page and how big you want it. And it might help to just kind of, without actually drawing, just kind of make some rough lines with your pencil. So just some, move your pencil over the page to kind of determine where that bird is going to be into the different parts will be. And you want to use very light, rough marks to start drawing in the different parts of the bird. And just think of them as simple shapes. So I'm just going to do like a circle here, maybe some lines for the general direction of the beak, and then maybe a oval for the body and the general direction it's going. And then maybe like a triangle for the tail very very light marks and then a line for the branch to give it a place to sit and maybe some lines for the feet where they're coming out so just very simple shapes to give you a starting place and make sure that this actually fits on the page if you get carried away and you start drawing the head, you might draw it too big for the page and you won't be able to fit the rest of the bird or any other part of the bird. You could do that with anything. So it's best to start with just some really light marks to get you started. And then you can start adding in some slightly darker, more distinct marks uh, to get the sizing right. And something that's really important with birds is to make sure you get the eye in the right spot. So I'm going to start with that before I do too much. And I'm not gonna make it real dark, I'm just going to try to get the eye in the right spot. And I'll do this by mapping out this beak first. And I'll look at this pink area and determine how big that is in relation to the beak. And then I'm just kind of drawing that other area, the blue area by the beak and then start drawing in parts of the beak a little bit. And then adding in this blue area around the eye, kind of thinking about the shapes in relation to each other to figure out the sizing. And then I'm gonna draw in the eye. And I'm not gonna go much further than that, just trying to ground the eye in my picture so I can make sure everything is the right size in relation to it. And so now I'm going to go ahead and start adding kind of a half circle for the head. I'm not going to pay too much attention to the exact shape. We can change that a little bit later. Again, using light marks to create these shapes here. And there's a line in this bird. Um, but kind of halfway through its head here. So I'm going to draw that in. And then a half circle kind of here as well. 
And I'm not gonna get too carried away, so I'm gonna keep going with this. And each time I draw something, I'm looking at the relation of it to the other things around it to figure out the size. So the beak, I'm gonna need to draw that part in. It's very curved and open. It has that little insect and it's more curved due to the angle than our reference. A reference is more of a three quarter view whereas this one's more of a side view. And I'm gonna just draw a rough insect in there. Just do a little winging here. It's best to try to get as many marks as possible and just getting the sizing and the relation of where everything belongs um, more than the details when you're creating a sketch because your animal could move away and fly away at any time and then you need to rely on whatever you have in front of you to finish that sketch or maybe you just don't finish it and you just write on the outside that it flew away but you have a limited amount of time so you have to get as much as you can in in a very short period of time and if you make mistakes like I just did you can just erase and draw on this mantle erase too much but a little bit is just fine and let's use the different parts of the bird to figure out where those lines are so just keep drawing those details in and using light marks still. And it's not gonna be perfect, it's just a sketch. So don't get, let yourself get too carried away with it. And I do think I made the head a little bit too big for this paper here. I'm still just drawing simple shapes to get these feet and the toes in. So I'm taking each one at a time and looking at it in relation to the branch and drawing them in. And don't worry too much. Don't get too carried away. Remember, this is just a sketch. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a representation of this animal. Just a quick study 
And as you can see, mine is definitely a bit off, but I'm not going to work too much on it. And I got very close to the edge here, a little bit more than I wanted, but it still all fit on the page, so I think it's great. And now I'm gonna just draw some slightly darker details throughout. And I think I'm gonna start down here on the tail for no real reason. And I'm just going to draw in some of the feather marks, some of the lines here on the tail. And I'm just gonna draw them in just a little bit darker to give myself something to follow later. Maybe this bird will fly away and I need it. Or maybe, well obviously mine's not going to, but if you're sketching one in front of you, uh, maybe I want the size is just a little bit off and I wanna change that. I'm making sure I have this drawing set and ready for painting. So drawing in the details. And one thing, I feel like the line on this is a little off. So that's right. And you can look in relation to say like the eye to figure out where those lines should be. That one just a little bit off there. And it's okay to draw those into your guidelines here. And I'm not gonna draw a lot of feather lines in have this funny clump of feathers there. And just really setting up some fine guidelines for where these different parts of the bird start and end. draw in exactly where this red area is. Again, not being too exact, just getting an idea. This is just a sketch, just remember that. And the toes, I'm not going to probably do much more on those right now. I think that's enough detail for feet. At least for my drawing, if you want to do more, you can. And now I'm just going to make sure the eye is actually in the right spot. So I'm going to draw in this red area again. This little blue area around the beak. And then draw in the pink area. I have the blue area here on the, this outer edge of the beak here and then get the head into the right shape so I'm now I'm turning it into more of a couple straight lines just paying more attention to where those curves are and draw in lines wherever you see them to help guide you. It's just a series of shapes. I'm gonna draw in this purple area here, kind of pinkish purple in this reference.
find the eye a little bit, draw in the shine first, and then where the light's shining on it, and then the black around it, and redefine that eye a little bit. It looks pretty good. Draw the beak in a little bit more. And I like where that's at, but I'm gonna go ahead and write in the common name and the scientific name. And then I'll move on to adding some paint. So now I'm gonna add some paint. I just saved the paint I mixed from my step-by-step -step and revived it with a little bit of water before getting started. And I have my other paints too, so that if I need anything to be a little bit more vibrant or I need more, I can mix it because I have them with me. And I'm just gonna paint this in the same way I painted the same steps as I painted the step-by-step. -step. So you can kind of think of the drawing stage as the step one, the transfer stage. So I'm going to take it pretty much the same. I might change a few things, but I'll try to stick with the step-by-step. -step. So first I'm gonna put the Bee Eater Blue in. And that was just a really wet light, lightly concentrated color. And there isn't too much, but there's a little bit here on the beak. I did test that out on my paper and dab it off my towel before applying it to my painting. And there's some right around the eye, down here, and it's hard to see in the reference, but it does come right along that way. Maybe a little bit more in the beak. If you do want it to get darker, you can wait for it to dry and then put more over it each layer will make the pink darker and darker. Now this is meant to be a quick sketching technique, so we're just gonna move through this pretty fast. So next, I'm going to add the Bee Eater Black, and I'm gonna use this kind of um, really wet light black. I'm gonna test it out to see if it's the right kind of black. I think that's about right, and I'm gonna add that to the branch and the feet and the legs here. And add a little bit in here as well. This is still a really light gray color. And adding more water in your palette make it that less concentrated so it'll appear lighter on your paper. It's picking up a little more, dabbing it on my towel and applying it here to the beak. And I'm just going to apply it to the whole area because the it's not really white, it's more of a gray. And I painted where the mouth was open, but that's okay. And the bug is black and gray too. And if you clean up your brush and then just kind of pick, put it over an area, you can pick up a little bit of that or even take a dry clean edge and just dab it lightly. It'll pick up some of that paint too, but I'm not really concerned. This is just a sketch. I'm just gonna pull it back over that beak area even though it's mostly black anyway. And next I'll pick up kind of the medium concentration black and put it over the tail, this black area of the tail. I'm gonna go ahead and draw it in this line too. Kinda just fill that in. Not quite as concentrated as I would like. It looks good on the paper at first, but when I picked it up the second time, it's a little lighter than I like. And dab it off on my towel. I'm just gonna add a little bit more in there. I'm not worried about it settling in weird spots, so. 
just gonna go for it. And I'm gonna add it to the nails. As you can see, I was not really exact about my position. This is just a rough sketch, so it's okay if everything goes outside the lines. If you like, you can take a little bit more time making it more exact. And I'm just gonna put this black where I see it in the uh, reference image, my bird that I'm painting from in the reference video. And then I'm gonna put a little bit on the branch too. And this is dry. You can check by just kind of dabbing to see if it's dry before adding the paint. And there are some areas that it's kind of have some modeling to it. And you can follow that or you can add it wherever you like. I'm just kind of adding it in random spots because this is just a quick sketch, just a representation of even that branch. And as you can see in the shaded areas, it's a little bit darker, whereas where the light's hitting, it's not really showing as much detail. So kind of stick to that. It'll help give your picture a little bit more contrast. Cleaned off my brush, and now I'm gonna add some of this green color. I'm gonna test it out on my paper before applying it. Looks pretty good. Pick a little more up, dab it off, and add it in. and just kind of moving over the entire space from top to bottom. We don't smudge it with my hand. I'm picking up more whenever it starts to run low in color and just continuing on. Again, not worry too much about letting paint get out of the lines, just getting an idea of this bird, not a real exact representation cleaned off my brush and now I'm going to add some of this red color to the red areas. It's a little too much water on my brush. That's why it's there and if you put your brush, dry brush down there, it'll pick it up. Well, something that's more concentrated. So I might actually pick up more of my vermilion hue and put it in there. adding a tiny bit of that water that was already on the palette. Testing it out again, it looks good. And now I'm gonna add it in to those red areas like you see in the reference video. And then I'll clean off my brush. I'll pick up some of the yellow color Make sure that that's concentrated enough. She looks a bit darker. I think it needs to be a little darker. So I'm gonna put a little bit more. Dab it off on my towel and test it again. It looks better. And a little bit of orange in this one this time. I'm picking up just a tiny bit from here. And then I'm gonna add it to the tail. Made a little too wide here, but that's fine. It's just a sketch. Dabbing it off on my towel. And I'm gonna pick up this orange color. And I'm gonna add it to the eye. If you need a fine tip, just kind of roll it on your towel. And I'm gonna avoid that white spot so I can preserve that shine but otherwise I'm not gonna worry too much. Like there's a little bit of orange right here too. Let's try so I add that in there on this particular bird. There's a little orange in there. And then this was red, but it's also a little bit of orange on this reference bird as well. Clean my brush off. This is dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in the darker green color again. And I'll refer to my reference bird for that placement. I 
Now this area is darker here and then it gets lighter, so I'm gonna add the darker area in first. And then the paint will gradually just start running out on my brush and dab it on my towel even. Continue painting, and it'll create its own little gradient there. Not being exact, I'll just roughly getting it in there. And on this bird, there's just some of this medium dark green kind of throughout here. Not a lot, just a tiny bit. And it could be the video edited as that color or the light or angle. And that's what we're seeing now, so I'm just gonna stick with it. And this does look a little ugly at the moment, so just keep going, don't worry about it too much. I'm gonna take some of this purple color and it looks a little bit more pink. So I'll take a, pick up a little bit of my red from the other side of my palette and add it to the side of the purple here. See if it might make more of that magenta, that purplish magenta-ish color that we're seeing. It looks that looks about right. And it might take you a little bit to color mix if your colors are a little different. That's what your color wheel will help you with that. So it's dark kind of there and it gets a little bit lighter. So dab it on my towel. And pick up a little bit more and I'm just gonna add it in there to that area, making it a little darker. I think I want to add a little bit more orange one more time to this area and here. Maybe a little bit of this light purple color too, right around here. I may even, the blue is pretty dark, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of that blue and take it to the edges of this beak, or wherever I see it, it's a little bit darker. Right around the eye here. Might be getting a little carried away here by adding that in. Just be careful of those wet edges. that paint together a little bit. I hear a lot of paint settled, maybe too much water on my brush, and that's okay. It's gonna be perfectly imperfect there. I like it. And I do need to let this dry a bit before adding more green in. And But I can add the black while I'm waiting. So I'll pick up the black, and I'm gonna add that to the tail here. And then I'm going to add it just to the nails again. I'm not being super exact here. And I'm going to add it to the beak. And I'm going to clean my brush off and take some of this lighter color dab off my towel and test it out if needed. It's a little too dark, add a little bit more. There's still some of that black, I'm gonna clean it off that well. Looks good. And I'm gonna add that to the tail, the yellow parts like we did on our step-by-step, -step. it's a little dark. And to these shadowy areas, add a little more contrast to that tail. I think I'm gonna do the same thing to this body area too. Just the shadowy spots. A little bit of this blackish color. 
dab it off on my towel whenever I pick up some more. Just kind of adding it in. If you find you're adding a lot of water to your page, you can take this down. This I'm adding a little bit too much water today. And every time I paint, my painting method can be changed just a little bit, depending on my mood, how I'm feeling on a certain day. And today, apparently, I'm using a bit more water. So if you're finding you're using more water, you can tape down the edges and then take it off when it dries to prevent buckling. And this is still a bit wet. I still want that to dry, so I'm gonna let that dry before adding more of the green. This is dry. I find it's better to use less water when you're out sketching because you have to kind of do it in a hurry when you're sketching a live animal. But I did get a little carried away, like I said. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more green and I'm just gonna add it to the darker areas like I see in the bird. And when you're done, go ahead and clean off your brush, let this dry, and move on to adding some ink. Next, I'm gonna add some ink lines, and this will really bring the whole thing together. It should be a very satisfying part of the process. It makes it so that you don't have to worry too much about where that paint lands or how many layers you put in. Just bring it all together right now. So you're basically gonna redraw the lines you drew in the beginning, and it might be helpful to refer to your final reference image if needed. So I'm just gonna use this very small micron, the 005 or 005 black micron, and I'm going to just go throughout and redraw those lines and redefine any lines I need to redefine based on where the paint landed. So say the paint landed a little bit outside of my lines here. If I'd like, I can include that as if that never happened and make a new line. So go ahead and go throughout and add all those lines. If your pen stops working, you can just take a clean piece of paper, scribble on it a little bit, and it'll clean up that tip a little so it keeps going. So next I'm gonna add just a few lines with the O1 micron, just a slightly larger tip. I'm just gonna add some of the feather lines a little bit more, add some of the lines that are a little bit more subtle that maybe didn't show up with the 005 micron. And then I'm just gonna thicken up the scientific name a little bit as well. And you can use this to add in anything that needs more defining, so it needs to pop up a little bit more. It's hiding, like the eye wasn't really showing up as much as I would have liked, so I just add some more slime. Maybe um, you need to differentiate a spot or even in areas that are a little dark. So shadowed areas, maybe you need a thicker line like right here on the wing that's gonna need a thicker line in there. Um, the shadowed area. So you can just go throughout and add those thicker lines wherever needed. This tail didn't really get black enough, so I'm just going to use my micron. Add a little bit more instead just for speed. I could go back and add more paint if I wanted, but once this is dry, so I might do that as well, see how the ink, adding this ink in does. It doesn't give the same feel as the paint, so probably add a little bit more paint as well. And this has more of a shadow here, so I did a thick line there. 
um, almost like a double line and then I guess a little bit more shadowed here and then more shadowed on this side so I'm gonna thicken that line up then I'm going to write in the common name just to thicken it up a little bit more so it's more noticeable I'm gonna have it stand out against the scientific name and like I said, I need to add just a little bit more black. So again, I'm gonna pick up that black color, dab it off on my towel and add it in. And you can add more paint wherever you think you might need it. And add just a tiny bit more on the beak while I'm at it. I like how this sketch looks, so I'm going to stop there. It's a good practice capturing this bird. Of course, you can add more paint or ink. Just try not to get too carried away with it. This is meant to be just a sketch. You can add observations to the outside if you like. You can talk about how the color was different from your reference image or how maybe like I mentioned about the beak being at more of a profile than a three-quarter, anything you are observing. Even you can put in your mood for the day, um, how the weather was, um, how creating this sketch made you feel, what maybe you learned, and um, anything else that you might want to put. This is your sketch, so make it your own. Don't forget to check out naturesketchcrate.com for future lesson crates. Great job observing your world and keep practicing.